And with that, welcome back to the side pod. <laughs> Shit. What? <laughs> thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And this is episode number 29. I can't yes. blow a bubble. You can't do can't a lot blow. of things, Kinley. What is it? That was better? <laughs> I can't blow, I suck. <laughs> I suck at blowing. <laughs> you blow at sucking. I blow at sucking. <laughs> this is side pod number 29. Uh, today, our guest is Mr. What's your name? <laughs> Ujjal. Ujjal. Ujjal Sharma. Ujjal. Oh, Sharma. Oh, Baon. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Baon? Got it. Oh. Yeah, they don't, they don't eat beef. You don't eat beef? I eat everything. No, he's, big, <laughs> he's what they call Big Rico Baon. Baon. Yeah, basically. Mm. Jor Rico Baon. Mip to Rico Baon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was about to do the hand gesture. Now. <laughs> That's a very, it's a very insulting hand gesture. <laughs> Let's see it. I want to see it. I'm no, curious. no, I, I'll show you. Uh, under the table. Oh, <gasps> Kinle, no! <laughs> Kinle, no! That was my penis. <laughs> okay, Ujjal is someone we brought to this podcast today because we want he want he has an interesting story to share because uh, do I? I? Yes, you do. <laughs> because unlike the We're paying you for this, yeah, unlike the the, the fad and then the trend which is nowadays of the mass exodus of Bhutanese living to uh, a country which rhymes with Bosmeria. Uh, to work and uh, earn a living. You make because it sound like as if Australia is going to like kill us for saying their name. <laughs> no, I just wanted to add some comedic element, mm-hmm. but then I you ruined that, so thank you for that. Uh, so <laughs> actually, it's actually so, pronounced Australia. Oh, 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 oh that, that wrong, wrong area. Okay. Sorry. Okay. okay, so anyways, uh, so Ujjal is actually a man who has returned from Australia rather than going. He didn't so, even stay there for five years. <gasps> And he doesn't even have a house in Depsy. So what went wrong, Ujjal? <laughs> what went wrong, Ujjal? Why were wrong? you the boomerang that came back? <laughs> yeah. You know, Captain Boomerang is Australian, ironically. Yeah, he is, actually. Uh, he rides a kangaroo, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> hey, where's me kangaroo? <laughs> but a guy's name is Captain Boomerang. I would expect him to be Australian. <laughs> anyway, sorry, yeah, but... Did uh, you come back? Well, what made uh, you think we needed you? I uh, just got tired of the place. I, I feel like Bhutan missed, missed me too much, so I just came back. Mm-hmm. Well, what what were you doing in Australia? What was his name again? Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, well, studying and working mostly, like every other Bhutanese out there. Mm-hmm. What, what, which year did you go? Let's, let's start from the top, from the top, uh, drop the top, because that's some... Um, Wet Australian ass. pussy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of those. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. oh, you shit. ate a cat? Okay? Uh, <laughs> no, what's wrong with him now? Yeah. Anyways, um, let's start from the top. 2018, I went there. Okay. So I stayed there for four years. You studied yeah. 2018 t- in Bhutan only? Um, I studied till high school, then I took two years of gap year. Mm. And then I went to Australia. Then you went to Australia. Yeah. Okay. He did the best thing for those two years of gap year, you know? What did you do? He helped a bar. He helped run a bar. That Millie Ways bar? Yeah. 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 That was like the one Dao, of the best which, places to be. Which Dao Open Stroke was there also. Yeah. <laughs> the Dao, what's the second name? What? Penger. Dao Penger more. Hey, Pinstrup, yeah. My mostest, bestest friend. Really? Yeah, he doesn't remember he... you. <laughs> yeah, that Canadian shit. Yeah. <laughs> that Australian shit. Yeah, one went to Australia, the other went to Canada. Canada yeah, no. Okay, so, so for the two years you were in the bar doing some work. Yeah, work. but I was also like um, playing around with musicians and stuff. Like and also playing guitar. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, Most, mostly Cahoon actually yeah this guy he's a really good he's got the snake wrist technique when he plays the Cahoon <laughs> I can't describe it to you next time he plays the Cahoon I'll make a video and we can post it on the Cobras yeah. Yeah. yeah he does this with his hand as he goes for the strike on the Cahoon just on like, the Cajones <laughs> on the Cajones yeah that too. no but then yeah sorry go on so, so then from yeah. then you decided to study abroad yeah or work abroad what was the mentality main thing was just to go there and work mostly mm. and then maybe just do like a diploma or something mm. and then just work 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 so you went there alone or went, went with the usual alone alone yeah. alone, alone. alone. You don't, single you don't mention that single single man yeah. single. Single. so single you did man. not go to get a be a consultancy no chijel <laughs> chijel consultancy sorry chijel consultancy yeah. no i did not okay so you you go to uh perth uh, no, Sydney. Sydney? Yeah, okay. No. Weird place, right? Eh? No, I know I know one friend down there, Ugintash is MGH, I don't know if he's still down there. Anyways, so you went to Sydney? And then Canberra. Three oh, years. Then Canberra. Yeah. So you were in Canberra majority of the time? Yeah. Oh, do you know Chimigam? 
Chimmy came. And there's, there's a lot of Bhutanese. That's like the most Bhutanese thing to do. Like <laughs> they, 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 you go to Australia. When did you live in Canberra? Oh, you know this person. Dendula, Dendula. Dendula. Okay, anyway, so you stayed in Sydney for a year? Or? Yeah, one year. Okay, one year. so now let's start from Sydney. So what happened? You go, you land in the land down under. Yeah. You see some kangaroos. You feel the, what, the uh, heat, is it? The dry Australian heat, is it? It was winter when I went there, though. So well, it was summertime, but... It's it was it was summer here. Yeah. That's a weird it was way winter. to describe the yeah. women, but okay. Okay, <laughs> so you went to Sydney, then what happened? Um, well, just struggled a lot. Well, what, no, like, let's, go, let's go to the details. Now, you said it in what kind of... Uh, <laughs> See, you just can't degree? give us like one word answers. Yeah. You oh. have to explain why yeah. you struggled. Well, How you struggled. This isn't high school, you know, where you just give one word answers. <laughs> Oh uh, yes, stayed, I stayed, <laughs> yes. Uh, stayed over at a relative's house because um, that's the thing to do if you went down there. If relative's you have some house? What's that? Relative's house, like uh, relative's house. Oh, yeah. yeah, I thought it was a place. Here. Where's a relative's house? Yeah, I heard, I heard relatives, relatives. Yeah, okay, your so. brother's there, isn't he? Yeah, he's in Canberra though. Mm, so, okay. but my course was uh, in Sydney, so I studied there for what one did you year. Study? Uh, Dude, let him like take a breath. Right. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. Why? Sorry. Why did you study? <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Making uh, you nervous. Studied uh, leadership management. Why did you study <laughs> leadership management? <laughs> it was the easiest so course the, the to get. Diploma. Yeah, okay. did a diploma on that. So when you're doing your orders, uh, first job. <laughs> My first job was a dishwasher. In what kind of uh, place? It was China. like a no, food. randomly it's just like washing dishes on the street. <laughs> like it, was, final, final. <laughs> it was like a chicken. It sold. It sold chicken. Okay, so how did like you like real chicken and stuff? How like did that? you end up getting this job? You applied or you applied? Applied. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and how, how does that work? One apply for a job in uh, Australia. You get newspaper, internet. Internet, Facebook. internet. So like just type like in like jobs <laughs> in my in my local area. Yeah. Now they have this app called Gumtree mm. where it's basically like eBay or something like that. So that finds you jobs in your area. Yeah. And Gumtree finds you girls in your area. Yes. Hot single ladies. <laughs> Hot single there's females. Actually, in there's your actually area. A, a version of Gumtree that you can use and you can find girls also. Gum Tree. Gumtree. Gumtree. <laughs> 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 what the fuck is this tree about, baby? <laughs> it keeps leaking with. <laughs> it's a <just> sap. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes, man. Pregnant. <laughs> anyway, sorry, go on. So you were dishwashing. Go so you yeah, that was my first job. And then, yeah, slowly you just move up places. Mm. <laughs> Started working in a cafe. Mm. So learned how to make coffees and stuff. So, you, know, you did not know how to make stuff. a coffee? No, like the actual machine. Do you have to learn, learn it and then go apply for the job or do you apply for the job and they train you? Really they apply for the job and they train you. But how did they like? Okay, you look okay to train. Like, they stick like that. Or what? No they man, it's just they awesome. are there in need, right? And then they. They pay bring you. a kangaroo and then the kangaroo smells you. If you're worthy, it takes you. If it's not, it kicks you in the chest. <laughs> you have, you have been chosen. <laughs> the kangaroo has a hat. Fast the hat. Gryffindor. <laughs> You have to know how to ride a kangaroo, then you oh, get the job. Okay. <laughs> license, hey, this yeah. is not your driving license, it's a kangaroo license, sir. Are you trying to fool us? <laughs> oh, put it back in your pocket. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Australia, <laughs> come for the country. Our perception of oh, Australia is such a stereotypical. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you go there and you there like, say, here's your coffee. You call that a coffee? That's not a coffee. This is a coffee. <laughs> Okay, so coffee. Cafe, yeah. Now we won't interrupt you, no, so no. go on. I, I lost my train of thought. Cafe. <laughs> you worked as a barista. Oh, uh, yeah. To, you had, you'll be trained once you've applied. Yeah, but it was really hard to get a job for like first six, seven months. So do you had no job for six, seven months? No, no. You know? Yeah. It was hard to get a job. Yeah, I had to apply for like 200, 300 jobs and then... Oh, like shit. Just applying, applying, applying. And if you're lucky, you get one. So how did you end up getting one then? Luckily. Like how they just called uh, you? Yeah, they just called me. It was like a really low end, like dishwashing job that mm. I first got. The pay was fourteen dollars. Is that good? An that's hour? Su- super bad. Super An bad. Hour? Super bad. Yeah. An yeah, hour. that's super bad. Yeah. I think Australia is so, actually known for being one of the best minimum wage. No, but yeah. What's so, it in Sydney? They were like a standard. Uh, at least twenty twenty two. Oh, so it's good. bad. Huh? Yeah, but I mean, so you just wash dishes. Yeah, just washing dishes for well, like I'm uh, a, I'm a six producer. hours. Straight, not straight, straight hours. Huh? No. So I you, mean, you have like 30, 30 minutes break or something yeah. like that. Okay. That's it. So you used it there for a couple of months? Yeah, I did that for at least one, two months. Oh. Then I got another job and then slowly. So the minimum wage yeah. per hour in Australia, the average is... No, no not hours. Australia, check it by no, the state. No. no, no, in Australia, the average. Um, the current national minimum minimum wage 
from 1st July 2022 mm. is $21.38 oh, that's, per that's, hour. That's pretty good, man. Now let's see what's America's. Anyway, go on, please talk. I will, yeah, I will just do research guys. I mean, being an immigrant out there, it's really hard to find jobs. Mm. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> because most of the jobs are taken by, you know, like Australians and mm. stuff like that. Like you can't apply for McDonald's or something like that. It's really hard to get. Oh, really? So, yeah, you have to, like, apply for, like, you know, So like how do people, one, how does one get a job at McDonald's there? Through, um, through connection or like connection? Yeah, yeah. Not friend who works there. Yeah, so friend who works there. Uh, my friend wants to work. Can something. I introduce him? Yeah, to something like that. Yeah, okay, so okay. if you have connections, it's much more easier, easier to get a job. Yeah. Uh, McDonald's pay better or? 18 to 20. That's still yeah. not that great there. Yeah, yeah, it's better but than I mean, America. But mostly, yeah. like, I mean, uh, mostly like high school students and like oh. first year college students, they work they in McDonald's. Work yeah. Okay, so finally, you, do you work as a, the, in the, the cafe? Cafe, so yeah. This is the longest job? Yep. So you um, worked for a couple of months? Yeah, a couple of months. And then I worked in a food packaging factory. Food packaging factory. Yeah, so basically in a refrigerated environment. Okay. And then food comes and <laughs> food comes. <laughs> so you pack it up. And then, yeah, you just pack it up in boxes and then um, this supermarket needs this much, this supermarket needs this much. So mm. you dispatch it. Okay. And then send it and then the delivery team. So this is paid better than all the other jobs? Um, I mean, it... It was like uh, twenty dollars, but I, I asked to work forty hours a week, so, illegally. So they give you, so they give you, be, they, they, they give you <laughs> very good, very good. Now, now, now the Australians were all watching. So, so, they, give, so they give you good hours. Yeah, they gave me good hours. So but that's how you do the job. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it was. Oh, by the way, the minimum wage rate in America, according to Google, is seven dollars twenty-five cents. Yeah. But, yeah. but you get paid by tips, no? Mm. No, this is like we're that's not talking awesome. about waiters here in most general. <coughs> No. Still tipping, so uh, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I've never been to America, so yeah. sure. Anyways, so friends in America who are living illegally, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> By that we mean ninety-five percent of all. <laughs> <laughs> all the immigrants are there. Ula Blakey, we're looking at you. We're looking at you. <laughs> Send us some doma dollars, you. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, it's law. Then, uh, so 40 hours a week, you're studying simultaneously at the yeah, time. How so did you manage that? Then? I mean, I used to work the whole night and then go to college the next day. Okay. Without so any sleep. Night shift. Nice you paying twenty dollars. Isn't that kind of they should be paying more for that? Yeah, hours overtime and stuff. But I mean like I said, I mean it was it was, you know. So how many hours uh, forty hours, how many days a week? It's like uh, ten hours, shifts four days uh, a week? Uh, Sam, sometimes I have to do like sixteen hours a day or something. But yeah, uh, mostly I have to do like three to four shifts in a week. Oh okay. So you get the three, four days off. Or do you go do you I mean three, four days college. And then maybe I used to get like Sunday or Monday off. Okay, one day off. One day off. But I mean that also, you know, like assignments and everything. So Okay. So yeah, basically seven days a week you have no rest. So hectic, huh? Too hectic. But you be good to save it because you be constantly busy. You don't have time to save, spend money. Nah, man, the money goes like what for the fees, fees drugs, and stuff, and and drugs drugs as well, drugs, drugs, prostitutes, drugs, yeah, yeah, okay. not prostitutes. Those kangaroo <laughs> forests look really hot in their, in their negligees. <laughs> Gambling casinos. More. Uh, I went to a couple of casinos, but yeah, uh, that's where you met the kangaroos. Like, that's I only kangaroos. went there because the beer and all was cheap. You can get like five. You beer went to a casino to drink beer. Drink beer yeah. and watch sports because they have like. Yeah, he's games. lying. You can you can, you can you can bet on sports or not. Yeah, yeah. So I would like that's why it, it's it's Australia is meant for me. <laughs> I should go ahead. <laughs> Just for the casinos, there. Just for the casino. Come for the koala. Stay for the casino. <laughs> <laughs> koala Come casino. The- oh my god, the best two best things in the world, man. <laughs> but yeah, so, but why come back there? I mean, uh, how long just, after you finished your yeah. studies? Yeah, so I was, you stayed there for a bit. Yeah, I did. I stayed there for two more years. Mm-hmm. I could extend it, mm-hmm. my visa. Because so you then, just part time then? Okay. No, then I could work full time after that. Okay, so full time is 40 hours? Yeah. So, so then I moved to Canberra. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was doing all so my course. So you did the studies in Sydney, Sydney and you went to Canberra? Year, but to... I shifted my course to Canberra okay. because I wanted to you know, move with my brother and everything. Okay. And then when I went to Canberra, things started looking a bit nice, mm. a bit good. Got a really good job at uh, the airport, mm. Qantas lounges, mm. like Qantas Airlines and stuff. Mm. So I worked there for three years. What kind of job? What was the job? Thank uh, you, come again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, come again. I just need one offensive joke. You took it to like a whole other level. I apologize. All right, go on. Yes, Qantas Airlines. Yeah, so I worked as a food and beverage attendant. Mm. So yeah, basically doing bartending jobs, barista and all. So thank you, drink again. In the yeah, <laughs> and uh, everything, the is, everything is free. Lounge, yeah. yeah, so everything is free. Yeah. So but you guys can't you can't get high on your own supply, man. 
I mean, we can. I mean, uh, there was unlimited food and drinks for us. Oh, you okay. can eat anything. So you can save money. Not, not the alcohol stuff. What the but boss don't see doesn't hurt the boss, yeah. Okay. I mean, sometimes you sip one or two, you know, okay. where it's a busy day. It's, it's alright. <laughs> okay. So you can like save money on uh, on food. Food and everything, yeah. Of so it was pretty good. Okay. Yeah. And then worked as a supervisor for one year too. Oh, at good. The same place. So then, uh, see, so things were looking bright in, in Canberra. Yeah, but still, so it wasn't enough <coughs> to so work another in, job also again. Oh, so you're working two jobs. Yeah. So you're working on that, that full time job, and then on the weekends, you're working another job. Another job, yeah. So, what, what was consuming the majority of your income then? Yeah. Um, what, do you think it's not enough? What is not enough? Rent, I mean, stuff here and there. Plus, I enjoyed a lot. So what is like minimum? rent in a house let's say like um Canberra and all Depends. the average like a good like not a even good? like not even the best like maybe like 200, av- 200 bucks a week yeah oh, okay yeah, that's, I mean, that's like a thousand a month something yeah, more. Something mm-hmm. like that. So and, um, you, you need to be earning what like 5x amount of that in order to kind of sustain, sustain yeah. more <clears throat> so so what do you mean you're having fun of the you're spending a lot for entertainment not yeah, I mean, I used to just go, go out, out, yeah, go out, out, hang out in pubs and pubs parks and, and, and buy some, some, some museums, and stuff, and stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Take pictures. So then, yeah. then if you, if things were looking in terms of this income wise was looking good for you, why didn't you not like either stay longer or why did you choose to come back? Uh, I I just uh, I always have made up my mind that after four or five years I'll come back. Mm. Yeah, didn't want to stay there. So you were like, okay, this is the thing, and then by this time I'm going to come, come back. back yeah. Okay. So then when you so what did you think like okay I'm gonna go back to Bhutan and do what? Um, I don't know. Just relax for three four months and then see how things happen. And how long has it been since you got back? Three months. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now now I'm starting to think about doing something or something. No. Yeah. Okay. Plus I have a serious back injury too, so I'm doing physiotherapy. Okay. What yeah, happened well, to your back? What, what happened to your back? Which uh, kangaroo was it? <laughs> no, it was a koala. It was a lot of kangaroos, man. It was even like koala shit. That's why he got deported. He's like, oh, bestiality. <laughs> Send him back to where he belongs. So he has chlamydia then? Yeah. Okay. Kangaroo and chlamydia. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> koala media. Sorry, go on. Uh, <laughs> keep interrupting me with stupid jokes. <laughs> okay, what happened to your back? I got some um, um, nerve problems. Basically, was this like a genetic? No, no, I, oh, injured, yeah, I injured working at that food packaging factory. Oh, what the fuck did you do down there? There's no forklift sort. <laughs> no, we didn't get any training and stuff. So I was just becoming like... Like, what do you do? Like, <laughs> I can just like, just like, they just like thrust everyone in one room. You, Don't kill you, yourself. Were you picking things up? And yeah, I was, I, was, I was carrying this pallet that was over 120 kg all by myself. And just Why? dragging it. How? I mean, I always did it. How, always did it. How are you carrying it without like... No, so just, just, kg there. just pick it up. Did you lift it. with your back or did you lift with your legs? Because it's low. At that it's, moment, it's a bag it's, easy, it's, a, it's a 120 <laughs> kg bag here. No, no, it's a pallet. Pallet? What is a pallet? Pallet is something that you pile the boxes on and then the forklift lifts it and takes it over. Oh, that, so how that, that little box. To, like, that how are you able to like the sustain one. the 120 kg? I mean, you just pick it up and then you drag it with you. So you can do it. Yeah, so I mean, what, everybody. After a long, after a few pellets, you decided to fuck up your back. What you don't no, understand no, no, no. One is. One day it one, went wrong. One. What you That's don't it. understand is Ujjal identifies as a forklift. Okay. <laughs> so he's the forklift we're yeah, talking about. That in this sentence. I mean, it was, a, it was a stupid thing to do, but I did it anyway. So one day it went wrong, yeah. Yeah, I just when I was trying to keep the pallet down, uh, my back went with it. So. Oh. Did you hear anything? Yeah, just a small. <laughs> So oh. you, Are you sure you pain? don't have like a slip disc or something? Yeah. So you you, you, you damage your disc or some nerves? Shit. Yeah, dicks and then... Dicks? Uh, <laughs> yeah, your dicks. A lot of dicks. <laughs> you you damage your dicks. <laughs> and see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> you walked right your that one. <laughs> yeah. So did your dicks. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, shit's happened. And then I and didn't... you went to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, um, went to the hospital, did all the MRI and CT scan and stuff. What did they say? Yeah, basically, um, two of my lower dicks on L4 and L5 has come out. And then it's hitting the nerves. Ah, so, so you, did you have to do like surgery? I mean, they asked me to do physiotherapy. Oh. Surgery is like not really recommended. Oh. So yeah, I have like pain all over my body. Right now also? Yeah, a little bit. But I'm getting better. So Doing how long has this injury been? Uh, it's been like three years now, yeah. Oh, if you're living with it now. Mm-hmm. But then, like... It'll be so, with me for the rest of my life. By the way, no... So la- there's no way of, like, fixing your posture oh, or your no, not pain. 100, or, no, not 100%. But I, I have to do, like, exercises every now and then and oh, just keep fit. The, the episode title will be, I know it was stupid, but I still did it. <laughs> no, Australia. 
I'm not as wonderful as you think. Uh, yeah. I came back with separated dicks. <laughs> <laughs> the human forklift. <laughs> so yeah, that happened. So. <laughs> so well, was there a part to play with coming back also, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Huge part. I mean, I mean, when you're sitting in a plane for like hours, just with limited motion, your back is definitely going to... Fuck up, yeah. Mm. yeah. So okay now let's now what are some misconceptions about people who go Britney's who go to Australia and We all don't wear Uniqlo jackets and sketches. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> misconceptions. What I, mean, misconceptions? I don't know what, what 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 have you guys said? No, I don't know. Like we just know that people work there as a, maybe the stereotype is uh cleaning. I think most yeah, cleaning. cleaning. A lot of people yeah, yeah, do it. Yeah, they do it because um, well, why didn't you dabble into the cleaning? He's dirty. Ah, he couldn't clean himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I went to a different bar, like okay. hospitality and so. Oh. But yeah, I mean, a lot, lot of Britneys out there do do like cleaning contracts and stuff. They pay as well, or? Yeah, they pay good. Yeah, mm. pay is pretty good. Mm. And then they get like a contract and um, they work for like three, four hours, and then just clean like office apartments and um, like malls and stuff. Or Wait, stuff they like clean that. malls? Yeah, they do. Wow, that's yeah, like, like a lot of cleaning. Thing. Yeah, but I think I couldn't do it also because I'm also a tall chap, leaning will ruin my back in the long run. I can't clean also. I can't see yeah. shit. Well, what can you do, Kinley? Huh? What can you? Well, Your wife. As, as an employee, huh? Your wife. Huh? That was last night, Kinley. <laughs> you did, my wife. <laughs> my children were not happy when to see that. Shout out to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then so the reason I say this is. I cleaned my house before my wife came home, right? Uh-huh. From when she before she came home for this holiday. But she already came. Shut up. <laughs> Afterwards, and then what happened was I did clean to my best ability. Mm. <laughs> as soon as we enter, Tenzin and walks into the house. <sighs> <laughs> I didn't do a good job, did I? No, I, I'm gonna have to clean all over again. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that's so you can see a child yeah, there. Just, just leave the cleaning. No, and then no, don't say that. Don't say it like that. Rephrase that, please. <laughs> you <laughs> will. There, you will. There. The try was there. No, but here's the thing. So I'm telling her lie down to rest. No, then she's like she's just resting and she goes, nope, can't do it. The house is too dirty. My mind won't let me. She's like folds her sleeves up, gets to work. Well, I'm so just like, oh, oh. Does she have a bit of OCD? Yeah, yeah, if she if she if she chose a path to go to Australia and do the cleaning job, oh, oh trust me, she she would make God. like thirty dollars an hour. She would easily she would do well more. Yeah, but yeah. she would be rolling the paper. If I ever went to Australia, I don't know. I don't think I would. Have, I I don't think I have any work that I can do. Then. <laughs> you can do eye exams, telemarketing. You can Tele- do recruitment. Mm. You can do what. Uh, kangaroo horse. Uh, even more. She, you, you, what kind of part times would you do because of your ailments? No. No, but apparently. Uh, no, they have like lots ex- of jobs. With no, no, exactly. So the button presser. <laughs> 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 what do you do? Just uh, every ten minutes, just press this button. Don't ask us what this button does. Kid, you kill twenty kids. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Every every ten second, I'm pressing a button, and uh, uh, a violent crimes inmate in some jail in Australia is like, getting shocked to death. <laughs> <laughs> Even the immigrants you, are doing that job. You killed my father. He was ex- electrocuted mildly for 24 hours. I didn't know. <laughs> Did. No, but then like, so in Australia, from a lot of my friends who are Australian, so they were telling me like, accessibility is really good because they really stress about equality and equity there. Mm. So it's not just like, you know, only able-bodied or people who don't have disabilities should work. It's like they will cater your work according to how your disability, disability is. is. Okay. Yeah. So, if Mr. Kinley, you are blind, you will be commentating on this cricket match. <laughs> that was uh-huh. a great ball! He yeah. hasn't hit yet, Kinley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a great ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a six. They have left oh, foot tea. They have left foot tea. <laughs> They're one of those white things. Oh, 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 that's my jizz on the screen. <laughs> you know, you had to put it. Why would you, how did it get there? That's the question. Hey, cricket is a very <laughs> arousing sport. Those guys dressed in those thick pads. Look at those. Face w- shields. Look at those handling wickets. Handling giant wood. Wickets, look at those wickets. Dickets. <laughs> <laughs> so many wood. Yeah, but anyway, back to you, sir. Yeah. Where were we? We lost track again. God damn. Okay, so, uh, Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Yeah, misconceptions about Yeah, there we go. So, yeah. yeah. So, anything you can say? Share? I mean, 
How's the KFC down there? Because I believe that KFC. Well, he wasn't tastes actually necessarily in Perth, but he was mm. in Canberra. Well, so what is the difference wide in terms of Perth? Canberra, Canberra is a bit more chilled, a bit more calm. It's a more Canberra is. It's a small city. Yeah, exactly. They have What's like the capital? Three hundred to four hundred thousand population. Not much. So Perth is like a couple of million, two million. Yeah, I think lots. Perth is like Perth eight, is eight Perth to 10 is like, yeah, probably. Yeah. How much? How's the Bhutanese population in Canberra? Um, it's slowly growing. I think there's like around at least at least one thousand, two thousand people. So the many, thing is thousand. in not that many. But Canberra, all my cousins everywhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 like same commute and stuff like that, like bus yeah. and trains and stuff. How do you know they're Bhutanese like, if you don't know them like, initially? They are always talking, man, on the phone. Always talking. Yeah. Always talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they always on WeChat. <laughs> yeah, always on like. Ah, uh, kuzu, kuzu, ngachina Australia le, Canberra le. So like even like, how's like because uh, when I was living in Japan, it's very rude to talk on the phone when you're in the train. Uh, Oh man, they 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 do it in Australia. Australia yeah, yeah, the one gives a shit. Yeah, yeah like, I was talking in crying, Kimai. Alligator came out of nowhere. Uh, it's not the Aussies that actually talk. It's the, the Bogans. Yeah, who's the Bogans? The Bogans Red, are rednecks, rednecks, rednecks of Australia. Yeah. It's like the hillbillies in America. Mm. Basically. Okay. Well, I found that, and, and I should be a Nepali person. people. Nepali people, yeah. and they talk a lot on the phone. So what's the what's the biggest <laughs> so self hate? <laughs> what is it? The self hate man. Well, it's just like trying to have a quiet time on the bus and then just go blah 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 blah. He can he can, like, oh. he can play the Bhutanese card. Then when that happens, no, I'm Bhutanese. And when he needs to be Nepali, he can be I'm Nepali. Yeah. You can. That's one. If yeah, I'm, I'm Tibetan and I need to be Tibetan. You can speak Bengali. Huh? Bengali. They don't need. They don't need to know that, do they? <laughs> <laughs> when Japanese. when Noko and I were in Calcutta, we used to speak deliberately in Zonghai on the bus, and everyone thought we were Chinese. But I saw a Swiss one deliberately speaks on other way. It's easier to communicate within two people. Yeah, no, but then we used to do it purposely as loudly as we could on the bus uh, so that everyone thought we were Chinese. When, 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 when I was in college, my friend just comes to me, in public, I'm like, what the fuck? It's like, nah, they came in with it, bro. You know. Canberra <laughs> actually, um, so a lot of Bhutanese seem to go to Perth, no? Because it's the way to reach, reach. Yeah, and it's also a much more happening city. City. Yeah. Plus, I mean, most of the population are down there, so mm. it's helpful. So okay, so let's <coughs> stick to Canberra first. Okay, so mm. it's more chill. So chill more capital. So what about in terms of work? It's, it's um, more opportunity wage. What's the difference? It's a little bit difficult to get one in Canberra. But yeah, but once you once you get one, it's a really good one. Mm. So well, so quality. Mm. Because but quantity like, is less. Yeah. Oh, okay. And like lots of government officials and stuff. So it's yeah. like all high end jobs. Oh. Because it is the administrative hub of the whole country, okay. so you okay. will, it will have more. While as Perth is what more of a what metropolitan. No? Well, Western Australia is it's in its own world. It's oh, like okay. their their own their own shit. Because they yeah, don't actually we, mingle with the eastern. Yeah, we we, used to, we <laughs> I forget that Austria is so big now. Mm. So how how what's the distance distance between <clears throat> Canberra and Perth? Four kangaroos. <laughs> 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 but, we, but on a fat one, you can get there in two hours. Yes. <laughs> no, it will take at least five hours on a flight. Oh, quite far. Huh? Yeah, Sydney. Like my so my wife right now, as we're speaking, she just landed in Sydney. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, tomorrow she will do a turn around back. trip. No, fuck <laughs> <laughs> You asshole. <laughs> She'll do a turn around. You hesitated enough. Yeah, of this. yeah, that kind of threw me off. But anyway, she will do a turnaround trip to Canberra. You turn around then. Yeah, and then, and then the gang bang. Oh. Yes, you turn around. Yes. Even like Sydney. The gang bang. bang. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tenzin. <laughs> but you married me, so this you, you knew this was happening. <laughs> gang bang. Okay. Yes. So again, we lost track again. Uh, so okay. uh, it takes like one hour between Sydney and Canberra, even yeah. in flight. Mm, so it's because so you get into the Sydney air, airspace, the runways are all like packed and stuff. Okay. So they just circle the airfield, mm. <laughs> and then so they finally land. What is the biggest population of immigrants in Canberra? Mostly Kingpas. Not Bhutanese only. No, I should know because my cousins are. All <laughs> population like, like like let's say like a majority of the immigrants in. Uh, Perth, let's say Chinese. So what do you say? Oh, in Canberra, mostly I would say it's pretty mixed actually. No. But um, mostly Asians, like Chinese, no. Chinese, yeah. Chinese, no. like, yeah. Chinese, 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 yeah. Chinese, Chinese. I think Chinese. if you go by process of general population, then Indians, countries that and have then the Nepali largest Nepali. population, yeah. Chinese yeah. Indians and then Nepali. Nepal is a gatter do more. Even yeah. Japan, there are so many. Yeah. In Indians Sydney, who say Gatia is the same. In, in Japan, in, hard to believe, there are not many Indians. In not Sydney, many. I think I heard that one in five population is actually, actually a Nepali. In Sydney? Yeah. Wow, so 35%, huh? Yeah. Lots of people. One in five, that's not 35%. I mean, you see Nepali 
Yeah, everywhere. Bad. They have yeah, their own, own suburbs and stuff now. Mm. So it's like filled. Mm. If you go to like Rockdale or Auburn or stuff like that in Sydney, mm. filled with Nepalis. Okay, okay. Everyone's just blasting people chitri through their speaker. <laughs> <laughs> like Pani, Pauri, Osar. <laughs> ah, I'm in Nepal town now. <laughs> why? Well, but why is it? Does uh, Perth have a more of a higher wage rate than other places in Australia? That I do not know. <laughs> no, you don't, don't know. I mean, it depends, right? I guess. I mean, okay, I shall find that out. Let's find out more. You can research. Okay, another question. Uh, there's this belief that... I yeah, make the guy who can't see do the research. You okay. <laughs> who went to... Who people who need to go to Australia. Uh-huh. They tend to change. I heard this conception. Like, they like, you know, <laughs> change. Like, they change. Like, transform. Transform. <laughs> transform. <laughs> Metamorphosis. The part the, they become like... A little bit like... They, they, <laughs> they become gay. Yeah. Can, I, can I finish my sentence, man? <laughs> So, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay. So, Pajochi, like I've heard that uh, the community becomes like a little bit toxic. I heard that the Bhutanese community, like they, like I've heard they bitch few, about each other. For a few uh, okay, uh, occasions that they, I don't want to mingle with Bhutanese. Mm. Most Bhutanese we go to talk to Australia. They become all money minded and they try to push people down. Mm. So, do you agree or disagree with that? I guess at to certain points, mm. but I mean I never really hang out with the Bhutanese crowd. No, who was your gang? Uh, the Nazis. <laughs> the Nazis. The Chilip Nazis. The Chilip Nazis. Chilip Nazis. Yeah, yeah. Hang out with yeah. the Chilip Nazis. Chilips and all like multicultural people and stuff. Mm, Mostly workplace. I had I had workplace. lots of yeah workplace people. Mm. Mostly um, I had uh, Kiwi friends, Aussie friends, and some Asian friends. She didn't. Really I don't think they the like to be called Kiwis. Dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, just Kiwis. So you didn't really mingle with the Bhutanese community anymore? Not much, no. How about in the gatherings? Did you go? No, never. You never go. Never. So you, you're that type. Okay. Yeah, so I just know. avoided it. So you got the wrong Sorry. Australia. You got the wrong <laughs> Bhutanese went to Australia. Kille. What's wrong with you? It was last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Budget mini. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. Truly last minute. Okay. Now I got no more to ask about Australia. Kille. Let's talk about some other things then. No, but then like, um, you always say something about Australia and it reminded me of something. Oh, no. fuck. You mean, you'll talk, I'll try to think, remember it. No, let's look at you, what do you think? <sighs> well, I mean, go on. people do change when they go out there, I guess. Mm. Hello. <laughs> oh yeah, I do remember once yeah. I was, um, so I was at Mojo. Uh-huh. And this guy, there was this Bhutanese guy who threw me off in a real, like, he really threw me off because, so I was talking to an Indian lawyer. Okay. The, the guy really liked metal and we were talking about metal. And we were smoking. Okay. And I had my top knot, no, that time. Mm-hmm. So the Austri- the Bhutanese guy thought mm-hmm. I was Japanese. Oh, you always get this vibe out, why? I don't know, it's uh, probably the thing. Mm-hmm. So you're talking and then the Bhutanese guy comes up and he goes, excuse me, do you all have a lighter? Oh. And I was like, oh yeah, I do. And then he goes, oh, thank you so much. And then he goes, where are you from, to me? Oh. And I said, no, I'm not dupe, oh. No, and then he goes, eh, eh, I used to be dupe. He tells me. I used to be dupe. I used to be dupe. And then I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and then he goes, no, no, Australian, a PR top chiba. Uh, and then I remember just thinking so he's flexing the PR yeah but then I was like it still doesn't mean you're not dope you're still dope mm-hmm. but that just kind maybe of maybe he's taking the context of CIT no but PR is still your booty is all yeah PR is, is just permanent residence no. it doesn't mean that you have gotten citizenship but mm-hmm. I will never forget how that threw me even the Indian lawyer beside me was like did he just say what I think he said <laughs> and I was like I, I but he, he, he knew what dope meant what yeah, he knew. He said, I am not Bhutanese. I used to be Bhutanese. Oh, he said Bhutanese only. Oh, okay. because we were speaking in English for the sake of the Indian friend. Thing. Okay. So he was going, I used to be Bhutanese, but I recently got my PR in Australia. Okay. And I was like, no, but that still makes you Bhutanese. It doesn't... So I mean, you say? can say you're a Bhutanese who has PR in Australia, but... Okay, so what did he say? No, man, he was just like, no, 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 I'm going to live in Australia and all that. I was like, okay, dude, like... Okay, so... We had to flex that at yeah, me, but... I mean, of course, you're free. I, by all means, I'm not saying you y'all can't do that, but... It was just a very weird moment <clears throat> for me at that thing. <clears throat> oh, that's not nothing worth flexing, yeah? Who gives a shit? Okay, you're living in another country and working your... No, I mean, no, I understand it's very difficult to get PR. It is a long and a very lengthy process, mm. by all means, yes. But at the same time, I think you're leaving your country, but this is where your roots are. Mm. Bango! <laughs> just, just I don't even know what that was, but yeah, no, but like that, it just, that, 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 that conversation, that interaction to this day 
it still weirds me out that that guy just came up and without me. Ah, you can you can tell that that guy was not very educated. If he wanted to say something that like he just wanted to flex. Maybe he was drunk. Probably you know he was sober as hell. Maybe he just wanted, just wanted to, to show off. He's on, ah, no, it's just a flex. Like, Where's the beach, man? I think it's over there. <laughs> I think it's over there. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday it was over there. Today it was ah oh, stretchy, stretchy. <laughs> yeah, it's up. <laughs> 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 no, once this guy. So we were speaking of Australia and Germany and all that stuff. Mm. So we were in Milieways once, mm. and then he brought this German woman. Okay. Friend. Randomly. No, no. Here's a German woman. No, it was. You a, still remember that? He was. She was a Damn friend, man. and then he was going to. He was going to cook her Bhutanese food, mm. and then I was saying, "Where's Ujjal?" And then they're like, "Oh, he's in the kitchen." Mm. And I was like, "Who's with him?" And I was like, the German lady. And I was like, "Oh crap! There's an oven in there." <laughs> <laughs> It's time to be drawn. <laughs> I mean, by all means, though, no, uh, it's just a very dark. I, I, I actually burned the dishes. <laughs> and, and he said, Lord, yeah. And he's slow. Uh, Ucha, how are you? I'm fine. What about you? No, 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 no. What about you? What about you? It's you, not you. <laughs> oh, but that woman is really nice. It's just that I had to, that joke, just as soon as I heard he's in the kitchen with the German lady, my head immediately went. There's an oven in there. <laughs> okay, this is a good segue. Right now, I was watching Bill Burr's uh, comedy special Ooh, things, I love uh, that, that. Netflix. Yeah. So he was talking about all these uh, men who get cancelled after they die. I'm sorry, like, sorry. Oh. Can we? Um, for those of you who don't like to watch the video on YouTube, please check out the Google Podcast and Spotify and Apple Podcast if you just want to listen to the podcast. Why are you? Why? Why interrupting me? Mid sentence, and you remember that. Huh? How did you remember that? I, I remember that I'm supposed to say that at the start of the show. Okay. Well, well, that was 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. So no, not 30. Okay. Minutes. Not 30 40 minutes. minutes. No, it wasn't 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Anyways, anyway, go on. Sorry. Bill so, Burr talking so, about men getting cancelled. So the bald guy. Yeah. The the mad angry Irish guy. You kind of look like Andrew Tate, by the way. Sorry. Go on. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, more Imbe. Yeah. Take out the hat. Okay. Anyways, uh, again, we're losing track. So in this special, he talks about uh, all these uh, famous uh, white men who die and then they get cancelled after they die. Like for instance, uh, Sean Connery, they were trying to cancel him because uh, he, he said that it's okay to beat women. Uh, he didn't say it's okay to beat women. No, he said it's okay to slap, slap them once, once in a while. while. So he got. He, he I got, still don't got, agree got, with that. A lot of backlash. Mm. So Bill Burr was talking about the context that uh, he grew up in 1930s, where that was okay. Even if it's not okay today, you can understand that it's from his time. And he didn't mean that I beat women. Mm. He just said like, like during those times, there were like 1930s movies, like where women were like, ah, ah, like snap out of it, you know. <laughs> there's like ear bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> so it was perfectly normal for his time. Yeah, yeah. But it still does. He doesn't condone it. But then he gets he they get cancelled after they die. No. Mm. But then these people who are cancelling them is basically the work culture more, and then they like boring work culture, which is actually a word borrowed from the black people again. Mm-hmm. But they don't care about that. <laughs> but they don't can they don't cancel female people equally. Let's say. So there's uh, Coco Chanel, you know Coco Chanel, very famous, no uh, designer. So dude, it's Coco Chanel. Okay, Coco Chanel. Mm-hmm. So Coco Chanel was a very famous. I forgot now. Is she a I'm designer or designer or Chanel, a, Chanel. or a perfume supplier? <laughs> Chanel is a yeah, it's a perfume. Okay, perfume. Okay. But I, it's also I don't know. So I think it's cosmetics. Okay, okay, we are not educated in the field. <laughs> of, you guys talk. I forget. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Jamie, look it up. Okay, look, I'm looking it up. it up. Okay, I think Coco Chanel was a designer, like 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 Versace and everybody else. Let me, let's let's confirm that. Let's not. That's not, but there's something about her I'll tell you once we get to what she did when she was. She was a uh, French fashion, fashion designer. designer. Fashion designer, see? Businesswoman. Okay, so she had lots of. Like, the founder very, and. Okay, can we can sake of the Chanel brand. Channel, Channel, Channel brand. brand. Channel so brand. she had a lot of. She was credited in the. <laughs> <laughs> so so she, she owned a lot of uh, fashion stores, mm. so she was doing really well. But then, 1945, Nazis attacked. Okay? And then she became a Nazi sympathizer. In the post World War One oh. era, with <laughs> yeah, she became a World War One Nazi sympathizer. So she became a Nazi sympathizer. After the, yeah. And she even actually, to a point, she was dating a member of the Nazis mm. the, because it was safer for her. Also, like benefits like that she can like these people are taking over their country and then better to be. Yeah, you're laying yeah, down. Yeah, you know, you're laying down roots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're, 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 she's, she's just surviving. So, so basically, Bill Burr no, but saying, she was sympathizing. Bill Burr is saying that you know people, men, 
when you're cancelling, no, we don't cancel equally, even when you cancel in that fashion. And then Coco Chanel, like we we know her for the longest time, but then people, there's a whole Wikipedia like a section about her being a Nazi sympathizer, mm-hmm. but we don't focus on that. <clears throat> but then when it comes to men, like even Sean Connery just saying that, just to smack a woman a few times, no, she he gets spotlighted lower. Which is not cancel, correct, also. Cancel, we we have to, I think. Mm-hmm. Ah, once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I think I think every woman in the right context likes a little bit of spanking. Let's not dive too deep. I'm kidding, okay? Yes. So full of stuff. So Choke me, daddy. <laughs> not like that. Not like, not like that. Not like that. Oh, JJ. <laughs> oh, God. This is uh, Nazi sympathizer. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, but how did we get to the Nazi sympathizer? Because well, of the German thing that I said. No, oh, yeah, German thing <laughs> I said. Oh God, what, what a way of segue. Nice, nice. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Uh, no, but then. What else? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about some recent current events. What is some current event? Oh, okay. Kerry is a band, Lumena. Supposed to be. Um, oh. the reason is one is one thing. Is it banned or no, is it rumored? No, it's suspended. Suspended. The word I have used is suspended. Their operations are to be suspended. If I remember, I'm going off. You can read the article. I did read the article, but I'm kind of forgetting stuff. One is that some people are saying that one of the reports said that some of the karaoke's are operating a little bit like dry youngs. Mm. Another one fronting. is yeah, fronting. Another one is that um, hang on, what is that? That most of them do not have licenses to operate as karaoke's. Karaoke's, yeah. Mm. So they are trying to sort that out. Mm. And yesterday I heard an interesting thing. I think it's a rumor. I don't know if it's a rumor or not, but one thing I heard was if you have a karaoke, you must sing while you're sitting down. Oh yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, wait, how does that? Like, when you sit down, you cannot. You, all bad activities don't happen when you're sitting down. If anything, it makes it more thing. Like, you can sit down with your friend and be like, oh, oh, oh. he's like, sir, you're shutting this down. Why? This guy is standing up while singing. Born to be wild. Born to be wild. <laughs> he should sing it while sitting down and being disciplined. But that's how you sing Born to be Wild. What about these guys doing cocaine on the floor? But they're sitting down. They're completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's giving a hand job. Well, no one said we cannot do that too. Mm. As long as it's not for money. Oh, while standing up. While standing up. <laughs> <laughs> but what if one's standing up and one's sitting down? The guy who's standing up will get fined. Yeah, but then the guy who's sitting down is doing. <laughs> who's the. See? The guy standing up. <coughs> I'm not doing hand jobs, sir. The cocaine is on his dick. I'm just sniffing it. <laughs> cocaine. Yeah. Did you do cocaine when you were anything? Oh my god, I'm not supposed to be talking about that. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, so you did? I did. Okay. There we go. You just confirmed it by denying it. Yeah, you could have just said I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm not supposed to be talking about that. I'm not supposed to be talking about that. My parole officer too. What is this? Okay, you speak up. I tried. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, there's no harm. I mean, I tried LSD when I was in college. Is it expensive in Nepal? Is it hard Uh, to get? I didn't actually buy it, but my friends had it. (coughs) Is it hard to get? (coughs) I don't know. Oof, bless ya. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, kangaroos are just what happens to humans. I think if you have, a, if you have like a somebody who deals and stuff, and if you have a connection, I think you get. In Burma, or in there. That's basically that's basically in Bhutan also. Yeah. I mean, not like you want to get anything done in Bhutan. You just have somebody who has a connection, and you get it. <laughs> but I don't think you can get cocaine in Bhutan, though. I don't think I don't, you get, I don't think anyone can get cocaine because this, this, that shit has to come from the the tropical areas, man. You cannot grow it in India unless it goes in India. Can come come to here, no. Dude, in India we used to get cocaine. Wait, how do you get cooking in India though? No? Huh? I think for Pakistan you get. You can get it. I mean, if there is enough people who want it, you can get it. I don't know if we have cooking in Bhutan, but I'm, I'm at the same time, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to be at that thing where it's like, no, we don't have those things. I'm just like, maybe we do, maybe we don't. But Maybe the high-end people do it all. Maybe, maybe. maybe. But in, the, in terms of like distributing, I think it would be very difficult. Mm-hmm. No? Mm-hmm. Like, because... If you want to distribute cocaine, maybe or at least a few yes. kilos, there, and then how are you going to get bypassed? I mean, I'm not sure that cocaine is a really expensive, it's an expensive drug. <clears throat> but it's easily manufactured. You know, like, I watched Narcos Snow, so they show, like, I watched another mm. Nat Geo documentary. Yeah, so I watched Breaking Bad, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's been no, it was, it's, I, it's, I know, it's I know. I know. Okay, anyways, so basically what happens is when they pay, like, a lot of laborers to, like, go to the fields and collect those plants. Yeah, before the they, cocoa then, plant. Then when they extract that, uh, what do you call, into Dark the powder, things. powder more, mm. they first make it into, like, hard brick, then they break it down, and then they finally get the substance, and then 
when you finally through all that process which I mentioned, no, it takes about thousand dollars to get one kilo. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you get to US, mm-hmm. you can sell it for twenty five thousand dollars. So look at the the jump, no. But when you get to US, it goes into multiple different channels, so it gets broken down. So each like gram go gram like gram gram gram, and then it mix it with crack cocaine, so it becomes a hundred thousand dollars from that one kilo. You mean like a lot of in the 80s a lot of these really big rock bands and celebrities yeah. mm. they literally went bankrupt because they had like thousand dollar a day <clears throat> cocaine habits yeah like a thousand dollars a day keith richards <laughs> he, he's still dead there he's still alive mm. and he always says that he's alive because though he did drugs mm. He did the really good drugs. <laughs> he didn't buy the cheap. He, he never still, bought the cheap shit. He bought like really expensive. But wouldn't that mess you, still mess you up in the long run? Yeah, I mean, look at him now. Oh, he he's, like, he's still not dead though. Look at other people who died. Ozzy Osbourne. Look at Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, Ozzy Osbourne, Osbourne, Osbourne did so much drugs. I mean, the members of Led Zeppelin did so much drugs. <laughs> By the way, shout out if you want uh, metal shirts, you can get them at Sexy Bhutan. Not metal. No, Led Zeppelin is metal to me. Oh my god. Okay. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. But okay, let's see. Let's see if a cook can have let's say a thousand dollars more. Now, how long can that last? These guys are still alive, so which means drugs are not actually the death of you. I mean, Steven Tyler once but, said that he yeah. snorted half a Peru. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then I think what you are failing to realize also is that after a certain point, these guys knew to quit. Mm. They knew to give up all of that oh. stuff. Oh, they didn't like o- o- overdo it also. Yeah. They knew when to like, mm, I'm having a good night, let's yeah. not to overdo it. Yeah, maybe that. Maybe. I mean, there are, they look how long they're living. They're like in the 70s now. No, but then at the same time, I think you also have to take into consideration that because they were such celebrities, right? Mm. That even if they were going to overdose, mm. because they are at such a status, mm. healthcare would really fight to keep them alive. Mm. So how did Elvis die? Elvis died on his toilet pot without anyone knowing that he was dead on his toilet pot. Yeah, so these people, these rock yeah, stars the are not got, going to no, catch the same. Of, I think he did it alone, right? So, right. Nikki Six, heroin yeah, yeah. overdose, Sometimes. died for five minutes. Paramedics <laughs> brought him back. Because um, Nikki Six. Pantera's uh, Phil Anselm so, no. died for five minutes, <clears throat> came back. Because healthcare, again, like when you're at a certain, I'm not saying that, I'm not again saying that that is why, but I think that when you are a certain status of celebrity, mm-hmm. they will bother. Now, if you came across, if, if you were an American person and you came across a heroin addict dead on the road mm. and you came across a celebrity dead on the road, mm. both of them have heroin, who are you going to save first? It's by nature, you will go for the celebrity because they're more well known to you, so you would want to keep them alive. So I feel like that's one thing that really aids mm. a lot of celebrities <clears throat> to, who did a lot of these weird stuff to still be alive. And also, they're ex- they're really rich, so they can really buy that good shit. Good shit, good shit. <laughs> as Keith Richards says, <laughs> I did, I only did the really expensive drugs. <clears throat> who was that artist who just drink like a Jack bottle of Jack? Uh, Lemmy. Lemmy. Motorhead. Motorhead. No. Yeah. So the story is. So how did this guy? <laughs> so there's a story where they were on tour, right? Not die of like some. He no, died. He died. And... He died of cancer. cancer. He died of horrible, horrible. What kind cancer? of cancer? Uh, stomach and lung, I think. Yeah, so there's some cigarettes there, remember? No, even your alcohol consumption. So, this is the thing, right? So, on one of the tour documentaries for Motorhead, mm. Lemmy invites these other two members from this other lesser band, because Lemmy's band is the headliner, no? Mm. So, he calls these other two, the opening act members, and they're like, Oh, Lemmy called us over to have some Jack in his trailer. Oh. He opens a bottle of Jack Daniels, oh. gives them one bottle, Holy takes out another bottle, gives the other one one whole bottle, and then he opens his own Jack Daniels bottle and starts so chugging it. So he's, that's normal to him. Right? Yeah. yeah, every day. It got yeah. to the point where he would drink one bottle of Jack every day. Oh. And when he had health complications, the doctor said, you need to stop drinking Jack. He took that to mean, okay, drink wine instead. And he drank two bottles of, sorry, two bottles of vodka every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bow down to the kids. Yeah. Let me, let me, man. Like, yeah. dude was like f- fucking amazing. Mm. What is to be a rock star? Mm. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yes. There's a movie, man. Although now it's more like tax, no, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just being taxed. Now, now there's no more rock stars now. No more now. Yeah, I think there are. There is the potential. There's pop stars. No, no rock stars. No. It might the, be coming back. It, I think... Um, well, MGK is going to bring it back. 
<laughs> with his tight jeans and his leopard t-shirt. One thing that and is very fun. scary is that if you look at the rock fans, they are very niche. So like they're very gatekeepy. Hmm. So they don't. A lot of the time they. Even to this day, like if you look at rock festivals, mm. headlining bands are bands that are like in their 70s now. Mm. Yeah. Like Stars Metallica and all are in their 50s, you so, know. So, which means there's no like new... So they, new, new they don't encourage, even if there are younger bands that come out, people just don't want to accept newer... The fans, yeah. Yeah, the mm. fans, not just the fans, but even the promoters, because they're not even giving those younger bands that chance. Okay, so let's give it a chance. What are, what are your guys' like uh, favorite, or no, not favorite, but like some bands you've been listening to which are new? That are new? I haven't listened to a lot of new music in a while. How oh, Manskin? Have you heard of Manskin? Mainskin. Mainskin is a Manskin, I don't know. Manskin means. But they're, they're kind of poppy, you know? Yeah. They're kind of poppy, man. They're kind of poppy, but I don't mind them. They've got a female uh, bass player, which is a big plus for me. Mm. So, nine is Silver Man. I forgot I mean, the listening to the man. King, yeah. is it? Gizzard or something. King, King. Gizzard, yeah. <coughs> Ghost is one of the newer bands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, they're still some sometime from the ni- late 90s. Mm-hmm. But they do a lot of weird, like, nice occult, uh, like, uh, cult rock. Cult rock? What's cult, cult rock? Occult rock. Oh, cult. Like, very dark. Oh, okay. They literally come on stage dressed as ghouls, and the main singer dresses like the anti pope. Mm. So he comes in with like a skull mask, he's got oh, like the pope like, key. Like slip knot kind of like, stuff. No, but no, like, yeah, yeah, like that. And he's got like the pope hat, and then he comes with a scepter which has an upside down cross on it. Basically, very anti- theatrical. No. Very yeah, but that's the thing, it's very really nice. Very occult. So, but like, like, I think like it's been like ten years since like this kind of has been in the mainstream. No, because even at least like ten years ago, <coughs> pop rock was at least still popular. But now pop rock also is not even there. But I think pop rock might return, but not hard rock. No, because I used to at least like even if no, I wasn't really into rock, I at least I could know like five like good rock bands at least about current time. But now I cannot say the same. No, so rock I feel like it's slowly it's hit its what it call slight. Uh, yeah, the wrong end of the curve more. Mm, I would agree there. Maybe that way. Right now, like now. I mean, it has taken so many different forms, so mm. you know, you can't actually classify it. But then it's again, it's like. So like there, so okay. While you hold on to the thought, yeah. So you guys are guys who listen to rock more. Is this maybe preferred genre? If I'm not mistaken, if we just yeah. say it's wrong. Okay. Sure, yeah. So what do you listen to on on the daily basis? Old shit or new shit? Mixture of both. Okay. I've, I've been listening to a lot of Japanese. Japanese, Japanese, Japanese like uh, one rock rock. Um, there is one that Utsav introduced me to, Scandal, an all girl rock band from Japan. Oh. They're so good. They sing in Japanese. They sing in Japanese, all girl, mm. like drummer, guitarist, bassist, mm. uh, singer, <coughs> all of them, mm-hmm. girls. Then <clears throat> there's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which I really like. Mm. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Yeah, they're a techno core Japanese rock band. I wouldn't, you, I can't describe their genre, but it's. If I can just play a small snippet, maybe you'll be You cannot, you can copyright. Oh, come on. You can't just copyright do that. Uh, just oh. Google Fear and Loathing yeah. in Las Vegas and ignore all the ones that have Johnny Depp in it. That's the movie. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you see like Japanese guys on stage, that's the one. <laughs> if you're into rocking, you rock shit. Yeah. So do you listen to this kind of new stuff? Yeah, then uh, I think, um, I wouldn't say if they're new, new, but King Giant is nice. Okay. King Giant's like very stoner, very like, very like Doom. slow, doomish. But I again at the same time I think why one reason why so many rock bands why rock fans love the older bands is because they still hold up. Like I can listen to like Black Sabbath's first album yeah. that came out all the way in the nineties. But you can see that for any genre they can like seventy. Exactly no, but then like, but then what I'm trying to say is with the rock you see this continuous thing where the legends are still like I mean think about it, in the last few years so many pop stars have popped up yeah. and so many of them have just like gone all, gone away, right? Yeah. Like they've had their peak and then they've gone out. Yeah. But with the rock, it stayed. Like whatever came in the 70s, that legacy has remained, you know? Like, like people uh, still listen to see, the Beatles with so much yeah. love and gusto. Well, let's say like r and b and Whitney Houston, people still yeah, Whitney listen Houston, to Yeah, Yeah, that's right. right. It's all Mariah the legacy. Carey, it's it's these legacy. These are, these are still pop, I'm saying. It, it, yeah. It can happen in any genre, not yeah, just rock. Yeah, older pop. They're, the older pop, but new pop also is, is popular. I, Old I pop new, is also popular. I, I don't mind new I, music. I, I, I don't listen to much new stuff. I like some new stuff. stuff. Like I, I sometimes I'll just go on Spotify and I'll just like switch on the daily top forty pop yeah, playlist yeah. and just listen to that. Like some of the new rap stuff is really nice. Oh. Um, this what's his name? Jekyll. 
Is it yeah, 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 like I like his stuff. And but he's not really mainstream, mainstream. He's more of anti-mainstream, mainstream. Mm. Mm. No, but then like, I think with 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 a lot of the music before the '90s, they've stuck around. Even like you said, Whitney Houston. It's wrong to assume it's only rock. I think it's any artist above From a certain era, era, era has stood the test of time. Like they're still like it's like how Elvis is still so popular despite this guy being like in the '50s or. But nowadays, today, you don't see. But then at the same time, this, there's this argument that can be made that maybe because fans, not just of rock, and but fans in general, they don't give the new artist that chance to become the next Elvis, to become the next Whitney Houston, to become the next Queen, because everyone is so thing about holding on to what they like, right? Mm. Mm. That's what take. Mm. You, can, you can take. From that. <laughs> no, because like I was watching this video on this there's this channel called Punk Rock NBA, mm. and he talks a lot about how like new rock isn't getting a chance because of how vehemently old, like how even mm. the younger kids today still, still listen to old stuff. Like I met kids. One of the most, I think like to me like when I meet like I recently two years ago I think I met this. That's kid. not recent at all. Let's talk about that in terms of time. Whatever. <laughs> it is recent. I mean, if people say, oh, we're recently, you know, um, the Bhutan opened. Some people actually say Bhutan opened its doors very recently. I'm like, 1970. <laughs> what the fuck? 98? 72. Okay. Like, Autism 62, sometimes, right? 62 is now. Anyway, um, <laughs> Back to we the... are bad Bhutanese for not knowing our own history. Mm. But, um, so I met this kid who listened to Alice in Chains and this kid's like born in the late 2000s. Okay. And to listen to a band that's like way before his time. Mm-hmm. Right? And then you notice that a lot of the young rock fans is that they don't, <clears throat> their introduction to rock is always the older stuff. You don't see young people mm. who listen to rock be like, oh, like those who really like rock and roll, like they're not like, oh, you know, I heard this new band. It's more like, oh, my uncle turned me on so, to... So, so you're saying this is what's happening now, yeah? What about for you? Who was for me, you? that was the same thing. So, it was old my, bands? my yeah. brothers, my cousins would be like, they listen to old shit. Pink Floyd, listen to ACDC, listen mm. to Guns N' Roses. And that's, and my own mom, I grew up listening to Dire Straits, The Police, mm. uh, Pat Benatar, those artists. So again, it goes, it's your, int- who introduces you to it? Okay. But for That's me, when I was growing up, I was into pop rock. And it was all local shit, new, new shit. Like, like boys, like girls, some forty one, mm. think one. Well, that's like the pop pop punk era. Pop punk era. Yeah, but pop punk. That era of pop punk is really fun. Bowling for soup is. Bowling I've been for listening soup. To so much bowling for soup. Bowling for soup. Then good there was Charlotte. some domain. Good good boys Charlotte. like girls. Good Charlotte. Uh, simple plan. Some forty one. Some It's so sad to see them now. They're all in their forties and fifties. Yes. Yeah, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You are the young guys. You guys are the young ones. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> now you, do you see how bowling for soup look like? Oh my god! They all look like uncles and dads now. You know? Oh, but they still got <laughs> the voice. Though. God. Mm. That that guy who plays the really chubby dude who plays the that guitar guy. is still like oh. Nineteen eighty five was still like one of my favorite songs. Dun 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 dun. Ah, but. No, lots, of, lots of kids are getting into grunge rock too nowadays. Huh? Grunge. Grunges. I mean, it's one of the most angsty genres. I think when you're a teenager, you really like grunge yeah. because it hits every angst marker point that you need to hit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think yeah, I think it at this pace, no, it would become like jazz. You know, like jazz is not really a popular genre, no. As we used to do, because now the music is very swing, you know, mm. to another form. And the popularity also, you can tell now. Been listening to a lot of country folk actually. Country folk, like, yeah. Johnny, folk. Johnny, Johnny Mitchell and stuff. Oh, Johnny Mitchell is nice. Mm. She's like Johnny very hippie. Mitchell, yeah. she's, she's like this woman who, she's, like, um. Is she the one who sang Changes by Morning? No. She sang the actual version of what's that song? They paved paradise to put yeah. up a parking lot. Uh, <laughs> Yellow Taxi. Yellow Taxi. Yeah. yeah. So she sang the original version. I never Counting knew. Counting Crows sang it, no? No. Counting Crows did a cover. No. Everyone knows the Counting Crows version. No, no, no. It was only recently I found out that Johnny Mitchell did the actual, and her version is so nice. Mm. Fleetwood Mac. Oh, yeah. Pretty good band. I've been listening to a lot of Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, like mm. older outlaw countries. Oh, I had one friend in college who used to listen to a lot of Johnny Cash. Cosby, Stills, and Nash. Oh, yeah. 
Neil's one. And that 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 band's mm-hmm. name just keeps getting longer. Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Young. Young. <laughs> <laughs> Each time they add a new member, and uh. oh, yeah, that's how it works. There's also one something called Lake, Greg Lake, and some something Lake is there. So I forgot the band's name. And I watched the movie Elvis recently. I haven't. I need to watch it. It's okay. It's not really great, but it gives a little bit more of a theater, about a kind of like a theater experience. There's a lot of like lights and movement, mm-hmm. pretty colors, theatrical, very theatric, yeah. mm-hmm. rather than a story narrative based. Mm-hmm. So and, and they, you see how Elvis key rise, yeah. you know, and it's about his manager who basically saw that he was going to like carnival shows with his act. Then they spot Elvis now and he realized like this is the old, and he's going to die out soon. So mm-hmm. I have to jump to Elvis now because this is the shit right now, mm-hmm. and it's going to take off. So. So that's what he realized about that. I think that's what's happening with Rock, I feel. Because mm-hmm. now Rock is like, this is the part where we jump ship in terms of at least commercially. Mm-hmm. Because the, the fans, which will be the fans, will still be fans, but it will be dead in 10 years. Okay? And th- that's how I feel like it's jumping ship. Like, same like Westerns, no? Yeah, in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. They don't make Westerns anymore because before, like in the 60s, it used to be the high, very popular. That they used to keep making Western movies. But now that also has to change. Spaghetti so, Westerns. You mean Spaghetti Westerns? What are the Quick and the Dead? The good, the bad, the ugly. No. That's a classic. Mm. The man without a name. The man without a name. What's the one that Surely. John Wayne? John Wayne. Surely. <laughs> but that's an that's an that's Indian Western. That's a really good Indian Western. Yeah. Really good Western. Yeah. Um, what's the one with uh, John, John Wayne? Wayne? Yeah, I forgot the movie. Uh, John Wayne. Casey. The man who came to town. No. The man who came. The stranger. Or I haven't watched John Wayne. John I forgot Wayne. the movie that John Wayne. I I I have never watched any movie of John Wayne, but in Hollywood, to see compared in LA, I know how it sounds. I know how he talks. Like hello there. Hey there, pilgrims. You ain't gonna get it on me now. Something like that. And I talk like. You know that iconic look that the cowboys give. You know that. Clint Eastwood used to do mm. that. Right? It's because you're when you're filming. Oh. They wear hats, right? Oh, mm-hmm. So it covers the eyes. Oh. So it covers because then in the camera you couldn't catch it. So they used to take the reflector mm-hmm. and shine the light into the Directly. thing. So because of that, he had to go like, <laughs> he had to squint, and then that that's how that iconic look became like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it just oh. him like squinting because the light was right in his eye. Well, Looks cool. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> you remember when we went to film Bomila Krama and Zoom, you had to do the, oh, you yeah. had to hold the filter, <laughs> the light reflector is just like. <laughs> Yeah. And then at yeah. one point, Solly's like, we need wind. Ujjal and Ujjal just... With this giant reflector. <laughs> like the basically, like, yeah. you remember that time I was, uh, smoked up like the... Oh, that was the funny. We, we didn't have a fog machine, right? Uh, so Solly so, actually... Oh, Solly and, oh, man. He asked me to like blow up smoke and like... Build, no, like, first he said, Ujjal, get all the dry grass. After Ujjal gets all the dry grass and puts it in and starts to burn it, Solly goes, Oh shit, I forgot to tell you, this is where the dog's shit. So he's in dog shit. So he's in dog shit on his head. And the smoke in that video is is on dog shit. (laughs) All the time, Solly's like, Can you don't scrunch your nose like that? I'm like, God, it's still there. It was a music video, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, man. Shit all over my pants, my hands. Yeah, the pants were not the dogs, though, was it? No, oh, that dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not. Even in like, no. no oh. <laughs> Speaking of bands in Australia, um, did you go to watch any shows in Australia? Dude, you were there, like so many bands would have toured. Yeah, I mean, and then I was finally getting well, COVID hit, so I couldn't go much. Uh, but I mean, I should have actually I I watched. A friend of mine who I shall not name, she... Love. She knew that I loved Lamb of God, mm. and as a gift, she bought me a VIP ticket to a Lamb of God concert in, in Adelaide, Adelaide, Australia. So how would you get there? Then? I could not go. I my my visa got denied. Oh, so yeah. you tried to like fly to, to, to yeah. Visa. She was like, I will do everything, Kinley. You just go. This is a VIP ticket. It's like meet and greet. You can actually go backstage and meet the guys. Yeah, and then I was like, and then I couldn't go, and I had to give it to my cousin who's there. And then her husband sends me a picture of him standing in front of all the band, and I'm like, you asshole! That should have been me. He's like, I don't know. I'm just here because you know, yeah. But then he sent me like a postcard yeah. which all of them had signed for like, you. Yeah. <gasps> it's nice. like it's like in my house. It was a similar that's experience that's when I was in college. I wanted to go watch Russell Peters, no? So there was a radio show mm-hmm. where they were giving VIP front row. Yeah. If you could answer no, questions. No, if you could make a video and if you could get the most likes and you tag something, no? So uh-huh. I made a joke with Russell Peters about, you know, like 30, 450, you know that joke? <clears throat> like, how much does this cost? Like, 
Thirty-five dollar. Like, can I get discount? Okay, one minute. Thirty-four. Thirty-four fifty. That's fifty cents. It's fifty cents. A lot of money. You get fifty cents here. You take another fifty cents. You get one dollar. Long money. So you, you go to the dollar store. You go to the dollar store. You buy something nice for your wife. You say, hey, be a man. Don't <laughs> joke about that. No. Yeah. So I made that video. And it got did quite well with the hashtag. No. It got Especially like, since you looked Asian as fuck. Yeah, I Asian as <laughs> fuck. Yeah, I, I did the whole impression. No. So I got around like maybe two hundred likes. Okay. Mm. Not that money, but the other people who participate in the competition, they all getting that much. But I, I, I got contacted by this thing, uh, radio show. They say I'm in the top three running. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll go tomorrow. I'm so excited. The next morning, I got a call. I didn't pick up, and then I didn't get the ticket. I think I either would have gotten a ticket or I would have gotten calls saying I, you didn't win. Get, get I don't know. But then I missed this call, so I'll never know. <laughs> I went to watch the show, and so I was like, oh shit, if I could only know. But I was in the show, I was in like high stand, Raspito was there, I was the like, whole show like that. Ha 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 after the show till <laughs> me. But at least I got my dream, I watched, watched Russell Peter's life. And it was a good experience. He still, he still performs well mm. in uh, life. So you really didn't go to any shows? No, so not even yeah, like guys. Like, so. How's the local music scene then? Yeah, pretty like, good. Canberra yeah. local music scene, pretty good. I walked in a live music menu bar. <laughs> so oh. yeah. yeah. Similar, like it was, it used to be a bookshop, mm-hmm. but then it got turned into a live music venue mm-hmm. bar. Kind of, kind of disappointed that a lot of our Bhutanese who are down there who are actually very good musicians. Mm-hmm. Why aren't they doing the dive bar C notes? And like, I mean, yeah, you can work, I understand you're busy, but play a few little bit. Like, Darpan's there, Darpan's such an amazing bassist. Kiliti is there, yeah. guitarist. Oh, Baksha is there. Kala used to be there, Kala's back here now. Yeah. But these are all like really good. Musician Hakma is doing a punk rock project there, which is maybe cool. they don't know much scenes here and there. Mm-hmm. Probably not. But uh, yeah, it was fun. Local bands were pretty good. They had this one uh, kids kids band, high school, like just finished high school, like seventeen, sixteen, mm-hmm. like great, like full on rock and roll metal, uh, psychedelic rock, Oof. and then the guy looked like uh, a rock star. Yeah. Long blonde hair. Mm. Oh, this kind of like kind of looked like Robert Plant, but had a guitar, a Jackson guitar. <laughs> and girls, oh my god, <laughs> Vida Nida. <laughs> that also it's a high school kid, guys. He's a bitch. He's below eighteen. <laughs> you weird fucks. He made us. Yeah, he make us want him more. <laughs> and he's and he's uh, he's not allowed to drink, but his mom was like buying him beer and stuff. His mom was buying you beer? No, but mom's buying him beer. But buying the kid. Oh, yeah. wow. But he was like 17. But That's a cool mom. Like, Who is this? Yeah. Sorry. That's a cool mom. Go on. Have it. I mean, the first time I got drunk, I had to uh, hide with my cousins and we drank really cheap wine and I pissed out of the window. <laughs> got that drunk. I just peed out the window. <laughs> I did that once. So I did peed I out, out the window. window. I don't think I have. Well, I, I, I have vomited out the window. I, I hope you do. I think, I think that's the most sensible thing to do when you're going to feel when you feel vomit, you vomit out the window. Yeah. Just make sure no one's no, passing no, by. No, no, no. <laughs> not in flat area where come on and someone has to wake up and oh, look at that. If, they, if it's piss, it'll dry. If it's vomit, yeah, uh, I know. The if it's vomit, morning, someone will eat. <laughs> kill his house. Mm-hmm. I have a really funny puke story. Please go on. Um, oh, so I'm gonna tell them your drunk story with me too. I'll tell him he, me, you, my, I have a drunk story with Jalo. <laughs> we, we all have good drunk stories with Jalo. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's tell those story. Puke story. Okay, okay, uh, we'll grab up the boss. So it was um, my cousin's the uh, Millie It was his opening night, mm-hmm. and um, so we were all just there, and then you know unlimited booze and stuff. So I started drinking. Oh. I God knows how much I drank. I like drank beers, wine, whiskeys, everything. Baileys, shots, everything. Mm-hmm. So it all got Mixed mixed up. up. Then I went into the smoking room and I had some, okay. you know, and then I came back. That's when I started feeling it. So just on the table like this. Yeah. And every time before I puked, I just said, <laughs> and then I started puking. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, my cousins and everybody and my brother and all, they wiped the puke. Okay. And again, I'll puke. They cleaned it again. Uh, yeah. They puked. They cleaned it again. Anyways, so be- while going home, Utsav gave me a plastic bag. Oh. So he said, you know, if you want to puke, puke in this. Do not puke in my car. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then the whole car ride I slept, and then I reached home, okay. and then he's like, okay, bye, let's go, go to And then got out of the car, while I was walking up, suddenly feel the puke coming out, right? So I just puked it in the back, 
And then I looked at my brother and my brother's like, what are you going to do with that? And then you know how you walk up the staircase and then there's a gap and then there's like a couple of windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah the first landing, the yeah. landing, the first landing. No, the flat gear. I yeah. just threw it up. <coughs> there was a Hilux now. <laughs> Windscreen. <laughs> You know what I would like to think? That guy who, the so next day, the guy who went to so that. You found that out later or on that no, moment? No, no, I mean, I, I realized like at that moment that oh. I just threw the puke out. And my brother is like, what, did you, what did you do? Yeah. And then he's like, and he kept on laughing, laughing. Like, one of them was laughing because we were all drunk. And then he told him, go and sleep it off. We'll see what happens in the morning. So I woke up around nine o'clock. <laughs> the first thing that came in my mind was no, the puke thing. Wrong. So I went outside. My brother was already there. Oh. And then we just looks out the window, and then the puke is there. Plastic. Yeah, and then nobody had come and cleaned it yet. We had to still figure out whose car it was, right? Oh. What and are you gonna do? I threw a bag of puke in your car. Oh. And then later on, we realized it was one of the Rinpoches that stayed down. <laughs> so hard. Uh, uh, From my building, and then he just cleaned it off. Who, your brother or the Rinpoche? No, 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 the Rinpoche cleaned no, it off. No, I didn't do anything. No, no complaints also. Nothing. It? Dude, if you're going to be a Rinpoche, that's Kas, like highest Kas level. Kasachiruchi torch to the day. <laughs> <laughs> so I just clean it off. Like got some bucket of water and I clean it off. I feel very bad. The comedy would have been really great if like the whole ride you were told not to puke in the car and when you did throw it, it hit that guy's, it hit himself's car and like, <laughs> Okay, at least he's gone home now. <laughs> Let's go home. Good job. <laughs> 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 oh man! Fuck you! Yeah, With yeah. him, nice. he got drunk once, and we were at Mojo. And I was telling him, Uja, Uja, it's nearly four o'clock. Mm. You should go home. Mm. He lives in Taba. Yeah, I know. I dropped him. And he time. decides to walk at home. four. Okay. Home. <laughs> I said, Uja, please don't, please, as as someone who's elder than you and as someone who treats you as his younger brother I do not think it's safe for you to be walking home right now mm. this guy no can I want to go be with nature <laughs> I have to be in nature I was like would you to stop giving me all that fucking hippie shit no? get in a cab let's go and then he would not listen and I was no. like would you please just get in the cab I will pay for it no, no. I will but it doesn't sit right with me that you're going to walk to mm. Taba mm. I don't know what could happen on the road no mm. And then Konya and then I thought emotional blackmail. I said, Ujjal, if you fucking go, I'm not talking to you anymore. You're not my friend, you're not my brother. Think. Then I guess it's over between us. You I caught him. He picked him up on my I, I did a fireman's stubborn. fireman's carry. I held him and I carried him to the taxi stand. He punched me right in the dick. <laughs> I think my temper just got the best of me. How I just lifted him off my shoulders and flung him to the ground. Mm. And I said, fuck it. If you get hit by a... I hope you get hit by a car. <laughs> I hope you die tonight. I hope you get hit by a car. I hope something fucking bad happens to you on your walk. I just left him. Next day he got... He calls me in the morning. Kille, sorry. How, how did you go home? Then? He did yeah, walk. I walked. Walk all the way? All the way. How long did it take? An hour? Uh, hours? At least two hours, yeah. One hour, 45 minutes, something, I think. So, uh, how far you didn't think? Mm, yeah, let's uh, get a cab. Tabo Hoka was the real deal, but after I got that, I was just sorry. Uh, I mean, I was still so drunk, so I, I don't remember how to So you just you made up your mind that you were going to walk? Yeah, apparently I did, so. <laughs> and then this yeah. guy, before the day before he goes to Australia. <laughs> oh, yeah. Before he goes to Australia, <coughs> it was our friend's wedding uh, the night before. Uh, so we were all there, we were all having a good time, and he was also there. And then we were like, Good, so, Ujjal, I think it's time for you to go, you have a flight tomorrow. Uh, he said, Yeah, you can I'm going by. Oh, Dan, he said, One hour later, I can I'm going by. Did you go already? He spent one hour just going around telling everybody he knew bye. Uh, and then he somehow circled back to me, again, bye. And then again, I caught him, I was like, Come, I'm going to drop you till the car. <laughs> and then Briggs all. Uh, put me in the car and uh, oh sorry Utsav I was with Utsav and then Rigzom and all bye Naja please Naja no, Basana last day of blah 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 and Utsav looked at me and go. <laughs> so I again came back <laughs> ended up going home and yeah next day you all were like what like what really, did you really missed the flight yeah nearly missed the flight man How did you packed everything and yeah everything was pretty good just had to wake up that was the only thing yeah and he failed to do that they apparently tried to wake him up like a lot of times but I finally <laughs> get up, get up, get up. Apparently I didn't uh -huh. even I didn't even make it into my bed. 
that really nicely. <laughs> Thanks for that. I was sleeping flat on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> What's your drunk story with him, sir? No, once we were hanging out and it was also like 3, 4 a.m. I wanted to go home. We said, we'll drop the job first. Okay, we had you, me, Isha and Otto, we got Bila, I think. Mm, yeah. They dropped there. Then this guy had the bright idea. Guys, I have the best spot <coughs> ever. I said, okay, Ujjan, next time, please. Right now, it's like it's okay. 3 a.m., okay? I want to go home very tired. No, no, no. Come, you never see anything like that. <laughs> Selling it, man. Best. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. Ujjan, here's a cigarette. Smoke, no. Then you go. You went outside, no. No, he's push, pulling him. Yeah. Go, one by one. Okay, okay, okay. okay now, finally convinced, okay? Went there. Takes us to a thing yeah, like how the place where pro- probably six boys were lost. I don't know. <laughs> 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 I said, no, this is where Ucha murders his victims. I was convinced. <laughs> I was convinced. He took us to it. He was going to murder us. But anyways, it was that not that bad. But finally, it was not 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 bad spot. But for sure, he's he's murdered like two three victims. <laughs> for sure, yeah. My God, down the stream of the. He said, I come here when I'm feeling, you know, with nature. Also, this, this nature thing is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a theme. The reoccurring theme. It's a reoccurring theme with him when he's drunk, huh? <laughs> and he likes to drag people with him to go on walks for some reason. So yeah, yeah. So that was my like mild, <laughs> mild story. So uh, what we learned today is Uja likes nature and he shouldn't drink, drink, drink when too he drinks much. When he drinks beer, he holds his beer like this. <laughs> It'll be like I'm like Uja, why are you holding it like, like an old lady holding a cup of tea in the dead of winter? <laughs> I just, I just like to drink it like this. <laughs> He's true, but Millie Ways was such a cool bar. Mm. <laughs> the owner himself would not be at the bar. He'd be playing music and he'd be like, Hey, I took a beer, hey. And, like, huh? <laughs> and then we just like take the beer, take up the cash, put it in the register. <laughs> that's how that's how it we ran out of business, you know. Uh, I think it ran out of business because a lot of people did pay our bunk you know? That's what I'm saying. He wasn't he was least bothered with this chap here. Mm. Plus I think after I went away. <laughs> oh no 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 let's not make this about you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And with that it comes to an end of this episode. Nah, yes, just ran his course. Plus I think he wanted to do something different. Yeah. Okay. Ujjal, thank you for coming and sharing some small insight into the lives of Aust- Bhutanese in Australia and also the lives of men who have dislocated dicks. And <laughs> apparently they love to be in nature when they're drunk. Yes. And lots, yeah. of, lots of drunk stories. You, anything you want to share with the world? You can let us. You can, this is your time. This is your moment. No, just be you. <laughs> you know. There you go. If you want, to, if you want to see Ujjal in the flesh. He usually hangs around, strolling Park. awkwardly in Mojo Park with uh, two hands on his beer, talking about how great nature is, mm-hmm. and that's about it. See you. Usually, he's talking to no one. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see her, what? No. And with that, uh, yeah, uh, do like and subscribe. Yeah. We're trying to get to 2,000 likes for Junor. Um, go to Sexy if you like metal and rock shirts. They've got a few new ones that have come really good quality. And yeah, until Cypod 30, thank you for being with us, Ujjal. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you so much. Now we will have you. <laughs> <laughs> oh!